Okay, I'm on now. Okay, so uh, our group is the. I'm going to talk about all the different parts in the computer to you guys right now. So, arguably, the most important part in the computer is the part that computes, right? And that's the CPU. Does anyone know what CPU stands for? No. Anyone? You? Very good. Yes, the CPU stands for the central processing unit. It is like the brain of the computer. It takes information in from your computer program, and based on the instructions you tell it, you tell it what to do in your program. It processes that information, it gives you an answer. So you can tell it to do things like add numbers, divide numbers, stuff like that. Um, and most people think of that as like the computer, but it's really only a really, really, really tiny, really tiny part of it. And uh, I'll show you real quick, and you guys can come up later and see it more close up, what it looks like. And I think you might be surprised at how tiny it actually is. Uh, so, this is the CPU. Is that like, is this like surprisingly small for you guys? Yeah. Pass it around. Yeah, uh, just pass it down and don't touch the, the top on it. That's thermal paste on it. Try not to get that on your hands. It won't hurt you, but it's sticky. And yeah, just pass it uh, down. So, I think the guy's back there, right? You can barely even see it when I just held it up. That's how tiny it is. And this is the whole computer. So the CPU is a really, really, really tiny part. Why is it heavy? Why is it heavy? Yeah. So... For a tiny CPU, why is it So, the CPU does relatively... It, it does, like, most of what the computer does, but it only holds a really tiny amount of information in it at once. It can, it's really, it has a really short attention span. It can do one thing at one point in time and that's it. So what do you guys, what do you guys think we do? How do we, how do we overcome that? Yeah, we have to, we have to store our program somewhere else. So the main place that uh, memory, uh, information gets stored on a computer when it's being executed is the RAM. So the RAM stores the information for a bit longer term, and it and it holds it. It holds more of it. So when you're when you're running your program, when you're running Scratch, the program you write, your script, that gets copied into the RAM, and then the RAM sends it one by one, instruction by instruction, to the processor. So this is what this is what the RAM looks like. And so it's a bit bigger than the processor, but it's still really really tiny compared to everything in the computer. Not a lot of stuff goes on the RAM at once. Like modern day, you have like maybe like eight gigs of RAM, and you have thousands of gigs of storage space on your computer. So I'll pass one of these around. So remember that the RAM stores the information that we're currently worried about. So where does the rest of it go? It goes in the hard drive, which is like your filing cabinet. So you can think of the CPU as your brain. The RAM is like kind of like your desk space where your papers are, like your papers right here. And then the hard drive is where most of the information gets stored, and that's like, like your filing cabinet or your folders. And yeah, it's in your cabinet. So the hard drive is actually where pretty much everything goes on it, and you'll see it's a lot bigger than both the RAM and the CPU. So both the RAM and the CPU store their information using something called Transistors, does anyone know what a transistor is, like, in rate terms? Yeah. No. Oh, no. It, you have the word switch in there, and that's what a transistor does. It doesn't switch from screen to screen, but a, a transistor is just a switch. And transistors are the building blocks of every, pretty much everything in the computer. Anything, when you see it, when you look in your computer and you see a little black black square like this, it's called an IC, an integrated circuit, and it's got literally thousands, if not millions, of transistors in them. So those build up most of uh, most of the computer. This is just transistors. The RAM is mostly just transistors, but the hard drive is different. It's going around. Uh, you can pass this one down the other way. Um, so this is the hard drive, and 
No, this is not the hard drive. This is the hard drive. And you'll notice it's a lot bigger than the rest of the stuff in the computer. It stores a lot more information than the processor and the RAM. What's in it? Very good question. I'm so glad you asked. So inside the hard drive are a bunch of little disks. A bunch of disks that are just magnets. And th these are called platters. And in each platter is a bunch of really, really, really tiny magnets stacked next to each other. Yes. Are they microscopic? They are very tiny. Yeah. They are very tiny. Yeah. And basically, so you guys know how magnets work, right? Yes. Yep. So they have orientations, right? If you have one magnet and another and they're not facing the same way and you put them together, they repel. But if you flip it the other way, they attract. So. Yeah, so by because we can tell whether a magnet is flipped one way or the other, we can encode information by flipping magnets, and that's what this does. So it's a bunch of magnets arranged in a circle on a platter, and there's a tiny little needle that determines whether the magnets are facing one way or the other way. So by doing that, it can store information. And it can write to it too by putting an even, by putting a very strong magnetic field on it. And that, we can actually force magnets to flip. So it forces the magnets in here to flip to write data to it. You guys in the back, come on. Oh, you have the RAM? Okay. Um, so this is the RAM. That's the RAM, yeah. So the RAM stores a small amount of information, but a lot more than the processor, and then this stores a lot more than the RAM. What did you do with The other way? Another sticker RAM. Oh, that's the hard drive. The blue one and the green one are both just RAM sticks. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're both RAM. So it's not different, they just different colors? Yeah, most computers nowadays have like three or four like sticks of RAM in them, because it's really important. So. The last thing that stores information that, well, everything shows information, but the last main thing that we get for information on this computer is a CD-ROM drive. Does anyone... I know what ROM stands for. What does it stand for? Read-only memory. Nice, yeah. ROM stands for read-only memory. So the, the last three things that I just showed you, those were called uh, non-read-only memory. It's memory you can read and write to. CD-ROMs are different. Read-only memory means that you can only write to it once, and then after that, you can only ever read it. So, what a CD is, it's... Does anyone know like what a CD is actually made of? Uh, plastic. Yeah, it's just, it's just plastic. It's a plastic disc, and what we do to store information on that, or ones and zeros, is whether or not there's a hole in the plastic. So a laser burns holes in the plastic, and whether or not there's a hole there determines whether it's a one or a zero. So you guys know what writing to a CD is called? It's called burning to a CD. And that's why, because you burn holes in it. Yes? Oh. We didn't even get that tonight. Yeah, the problem always, so with CDs, they're made of plastic, which is really soft, so it scratches really easily. And the problem is if you scratch it, that puts holes in it. And now when the laser reads it, it can't tell what, what is your scratch and what's the actual, what's supposed to be the information. So that's why you can't scratch a CD either. We didn't get to see it. We didn't get to see that. Stop, Isaiah. Yeah. It was burned to put, if you, to put the music on the CD, you burn it. To read the music off the CD, you just read it. Yeah, you have to burn the CD to put the music on it. Yeah, and that's DVD. So that's what all that's the CDs go inside the computer. Yeah, they go in there. It's big. It's really big. It looks like a DVD player. Okay, so to recap, we talked about so far the processor that stores information. We talked about the RAM or process information. We talked about the RAM that stores short term memory, hard drives long term, and CD ROM is something called external memory. It's external to the computer, so that's how you put information, that's one way to put information into it. So, um, so, so guys, is there is there like any is there any problem with what I've been like saying so far? No. Well, I don't really understand. Oh, CPU central processing unit. So.
So why is there so many chemicals? Let's all listen to the questions, guys. Why are there so many different places where you can store information in a computer? Why can't there be like one central place where you can pull all information long term? That's a really good question. The, the question was, if anyone didn't hear it, was why do we store information in so many different places and not just one place? And the answer to that question is, some places that store information are better than others. So, the RAM, for example, it can be read from and written to really, really, really quickly. But the problem is, you can't put a lot on it. The RAM is very, it's not very dense how it stores the information and we're sacrificing the ability to read it really quickly. Um, we're sacrificing that for that ability. The hard drive, the hard drive takes a longer time to read information. So we can store more information on the hard drive but it takes longer to read. So when we're executing a program, we copy the program to the RAM first so that it can send it a lot quicker to the processor. If we stored it all in one place, it would be really slow. Oh, thanks. We didn't get to see our thing. We still passing it down. They're still passing it. Yes. Yeah, tonight is the one. Tonight was like, I'm keeping it. Yeah, he asked, that's a really good question. Um, what do you put on the hard drive and what do you put on the RAM, he asked. You put the stuff that you're currently working on on the RAM because it's easier to write to and read from, it's quicker. And stuff that you're not currently worried about, you store on the hard drive. So, like, I said, oh, you something else? Oh my gosh. Writing an essay in Word, that essay is currently being stored in the RAM. But when you close Word, save the essay, and close it out, then the essay gets transferred to the hard drive and it stays there until you open Word again. So, the, the last thing I want to talk about right now is how do all of these pieces communicate together? Because I just showed you all these different parts, but how do they actually communicate? Yes. <laughs> There were, uh, we use wires, yeah. Like nerves, like nerves in your body. Exactly like nerves in your body. Your nerves in your body, Ooh. just like wires, just carry electric pulses. So they're very similar. And in like in the early days of computers, and even now, if you're like building, like you're like hardcore building your own, you would have to directly wire everything together, and you would have to solder it together with like a um, put it in a breadboard. But instead of, instead of directly wiring everything together, we have what's called a motherboard. What a motherboard is, what a motherboard is, is a, um, it's just a piece of silicon that has a, ton, a bunch of wires in it and a bunch of ports. These are called ports that you can just plug all your pieces into. So every hard drive can plug in. Any hard drive can plug into this motherboard. You don't need to know how to wire it. Any piece of RAM you can plug in here on the motherboard, and you don't need to know how to wire it. Yeah. Um, like, where, where do you put SD card and your computer? Like, so, an, an SD card is another example of external uh, data storage. So, just like a CD, uh, CD-ROM reader, you need an SD card reader, and the SD card reader would connect to the motherboard. Um, and this one, this computer. This computer doesn't have um, SD, but USB, SD, all, 
uh, CD, DVD, Blu-ray, it all needs to go through a reader which then connects to the motherboard so that, and then that sends it through the motherboard to the processor. Yeah. Um, what is that? What is what? That, that yes. John, yes. So this, uh, I'll move back because I want to talk about motherboard first. Yeah. This is, this is called the power supply, this thing. I can't detach it from the computer because it's connected to everything. It has a fan in it. What it and because it gets really hot. What it does is you plug this into the wall, and the wall supplies a lot, a lot, a lot of power in a form that the computer doesn't want. If you tried wiring something on your computer directly into an outlet, it would blow up. What this does is it converts the current into the form it needs to be. So it's a lot less power, and it's DC rather than DC current. So what do you mean about it blowing up? Like if you like literally like took like wires, put it in an outlet, and like stuck it on this, it would it'd probably blow it up. Like, if you put it across like a capacitor, it would blow up. It wouldn't be able to take that current. Because the, 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 that's also why you don't stick like a fork into an electric outlet, because it would blow you up. It's not. Um, that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, oh. And speaking of fans, everything on the computer gets hot, and they all need uh, fans to cool them off. Isaiah. So when I, did I get, where's the processor? Where did that end up? Okay. So when you, when I pass the processor around, you saw like the white sticky stuff on top. That is called thermal paste. that connects the processor to a heat sink, which connects it to a fan. Which it. Yes. Um, like, does your phone have like a hard drive? Your phone has a hard drive, but it's not a magnetic hard drive. Your phone has a uh, second type of hard drive called a SSD, a solid state drive, and that's it's, it's similar to what's on a USB flash drive, is also what uh, phones have. So those are faster and they break a lot less. Hard drives, if you move them around a lot, they break because they're moving parts. SSDs don't, so you put those in a phone. Yeah. Is that thing a DVD player? What? Behind this. you. I just this? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's not a DVD player. It's a it's a DVD reader. Like you couldn't hook this up to your TV and, and play a DVD. Yeah. But if you put this on your motherboard and then your processor can read off the DVD and then if you plug the computer into your TV, you can play it. And what a DVD player is, it's called an embedded system that does all that for you without needing a computer. I would need a paper clip. That's not powered, so I can't. Paper clip. You guys don't know if you stick a paper clip in the hole, you can quiet out in case it gets stuck. Okay. But yeah, I can't open it. Yes. A USB is a form of like external storage. It's another form of external storage. Yeah. Well, a USB drive is most people just call it a USB. USB is just a standard for transmitting information through its universal stereo bus. But a USB drive is external storage. So universal. Universal stereo bus. It basically means that you can, it can, uh, it can plug. It's a, it's a universal port that anything can plug into. You used to need a separate port for your mouse, your keyboard, everything. Now it's just all USB. So your mouse is USB, your keyboard is USB. Any other questions? Yes. What do you call the wires? The wires. We call them wires. <laughs> no. Or cables. Um, there's different types. So, the things that hold the wires together, you can call them tethers or insulation. Yeah. Are you packing anything else? Uh, do you want something else? Um, I can't pass this whole thing. I can pass the heat sink around. Yeah. Pass this way. Yeah. This way. Oh my. They 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 observe too much. We give it this way. I'm sure they got it. Exactly. Pass it quick. I'm glad you guys are excited to see this. Um, that looks like a good one. There needs to be two in it. There needs to be two in it. Mm -hmm. It's a big chunk of metal that absorbs all the energy because metal is really good at absorbing energy. And then there's a fan that explodes it away. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't really cool you off because like, we're a lot bigger than stuff in the computer. No, it's it's tiny. Tiny. Oh, okay, I just shook myself. Put myself in there. Anyone? Oh, have you shrunk yourself? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? No questions? I'm waiting for this. The motherboard? Oh. It's like, it's basically attached to this.
piece is hopefully increasing of all the stuff on it. That's the mother board. Yeah. yeah, if anyone wants to come up and get a closer look, you guys can come back. Wow, okay. Yeah, this is the mother board, the whole thing. I can't, no, I can't. No, it's really big, yeah. The mother board connects everything. Oh yeah, try not to stop cards, try not to touch it. Okay. Like, don't touch it.
Okay, guys. So a few more minutes, and then we're all gonna go back to uh, scratch. Guys, 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 guys,